What's up, everybody? My name is Dell. This is Dell on Movies. Thanks for hanging out with me. And if you've been here before, thanks for hanging out with me again. Welcome back to another episode of Movie Swap. I'm very excited to talk to tonight's guest. I've actually gotten to meet this person in person, so that that was a real treat for me. So we had a good time when we met, hung out a little bit, bought some movies together, and now he's here bringing the uh, silky smooth NPR voice with him. And of course, I'm talking about my guy Corey of Wookiees Movies and Music. What's going on, Corey? Oh, not much, man. I'm having a great time. What an intro. I couldn't ask for anything better there. So <laughs> I'm never going to live that down. I'm the NPR voice, I guess, from now on. So Yeah. Uh, if you if you don't want to hear a better intro, then don't go on anybody else's show because I'm sure they've got better ones. Oh, no, no, no. Not at all. I appreciate it. <laughs> but like you said, I, I had a blast. Uh, it's cool. Um, that we were able to meet up in person and had so much fun uh, shopping around orbit with uh, you and Ryan. That was, uh, and then having lunch with everybody else, you know, with, with the group, but uh, very cool thing to be able to do. Whoever, who would have ever thought, you know, I, that's where I'll probably sound like the old guy talking about before internet, you know, and everything. <laughs> but, but I mean, to have somebody, we're quite a ways away from each other to be able to right. meet up talk about movies but then not only that be able to meet up in person and uh get to hang out and have a great day like that yeah yeah it was it was a good time it was yeah. a good time and uh, was it your first time in north carolina at all uh yes i'll, I'll say yes i've been through airport <laughs> but that doesn't count <laughs> you know right, so right. but no that's my first time i actually got to be in north carolina i've been in tennessee before but uh not actually in north carolina like that so Asheville's pretty. I, I wouldn't mind getting back out there. And I know there's a lot of people I hear uh, go out to the, the coast as well of North Carolina and uh, have a lot of good things to say. So I'll have to venture out that way again someday. Just make sure it's not during hurricane season. <laughs> That'd be my luck. I'd pick the wrong type of year. I'll just ask you first before I head out that way. <laughs> How, what'd you think of Orbit DVD when you're out there? I loved it. Uh, that was such a fun store. Um, I, I bought from orbit a few times online and uh i know everything that i got while we were there i could have just bought online but the whole thing about us talking about physical media i know you're still getting the physical media buying it online but there's like another level of it i think when you're actually in the store and you just see all the stuff lined up and you can grab it and hold it in your hand and take a look at it and even if you don't buy it they just had some cool box sets that I just never would see sitting around a store around me. So I don't know. I was like a kid in the candy store, man. <laughs> I was just walking you, around. Yeah, you and me both. I mean, if I, if I had the means, I would have came home with a lot more stuff. Oh man. But, yeah. You can get in danger. That's where I'd love to have a store like that near me, but I would hate to have a store like that near me. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's, it's funny. I know you guys went to a, a McKay's in Nashville. Yeah. And there is a there's a, a McKay's in North Carolina in Greensboro, which is about an hour from me, and they're they're closing that down, and and in a couple of weeks they're opening up about thirty minutes closer to me. So that's gonna be fun, and it's supposed to be like a thirty five thousand foot store. I'm just like, oh, my oh, goodness. the two that I so we were at two, so we were um, Ryan and I hit Nashville on our way out. I I met up with him uh, in Indiana and uh, headed out to hit the one in Nashville on our way out. But then in Knoxville, there was one there too, that we got to go to um, actually a couple times when we were in Knoxville and both of those, I think and nothing against the uh, Knoxville one, but I think Nashville had a beat a little bit, but both of them were huge. And I just loved seeing, I mean, it was just crazy walking in there and they're huge stores. I love seeing all the people in there shopping too. You know, it was fun to be, and just random people. It's fun talking with our group, looking at stuff to buy. But then just random people would be walking up and you'd pull a movie off a shelf and they'd start talking to you about it. You know, they'd yeah. see what you're grabbing in your hand. And I don't know, I miss those. It's like the VHS store days, you know, going into rent and people are talking about what movie to get or not. Or Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. I remember well, I worked at a blockbuster side and I know for sure. Yeah. That's always fun. <laughs> yeah. This new McKay's is it's pretty big. You can see it from the highway because I've driven past it going like going to Greensboro. I've driven past it and it's pretty, pretty big. So I'm, kind of excited for when I get a chance to go in there. Maybe not anytime soon, but we'll see. I don't know. Yeah, it's crazy the amount of what what they have going through there, like music and movies and books. And um, even yeah, from the time we go. were there, going like from one day to the next over a weekend, they turn over and get a lot of new stuff in too. A lot of people are coming into trade and 
yeah, sell or yeah. trade, and yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, they, had, they got lots of memorabilia. They had walls of Funko Pops sometimes <laughs> in some of the places. Yep. And uh, I, I don't get into the Funkos. I don't know if you do or not. <laughs> I don't. I don't have any. I think they look cool, but I just that's like another rabbit hole to go down. You know? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, I, yeah. One thing to spend my money on is enough. I don't need two. I I might have more than one thing, but I don't need to add another to that <laughs> list. Right, you know. Right. <laughs> But right. no, there's a lot of cool ones that I see and I love seeing people collecting them. And I love to get seeing them and getting excited about it. But I just, yeah, that's just one. That's one less thing I need to worry about. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because I, I don't want to start obsessing over those. And I see some <laughs> that are really cool. Like, you know, some of the, especially ones that have the big sets. Oh, yeah. I mean, like some of the bands, they'll they have like a whole stage set up with them and they look pretty cool and I'm like oh no if i start if i start that then i'm going to want to buy more and I, I, I don't need that in my life that's for sure <laughs> yeah you don't need more things to, usually it's not a problem finding ways to spend your money so you don't need to come up with even more ways to exactly you know, to spend exactly. even more money so no absolutely it's uh yeah i'm sticking with what i'm doing right now <laughs> <laughs> so now you're you're a person who we all started seeing like all of us i mean you started we started seeing you in in the chats in different people's live streams yeah and then one day it was like hey guys i got a channel so tell me tell me about the jump from from just watching youtube to getting in the chats and then having a channel yeah no it's been kind of crazy but i'll i'll say overall it's been a great experience and i've ha i'm still having fun with it um but yes i was in chats hanging out talking with people for quite a long time before I did anything with YouTube. I actually created a channel and it was just my name at first. And then I switched it to Wilkie's uh, movies and music. Cause I was like, oh, I just got to think of something. I was just going with a nickname that I kind of runs in my family and didn't do anything with it forever. And just kept on going in the chats, hanging out with people talking. And I still have fun doing that. I have a blast go on a regular, just whatever night somebody's streaming, I'll go out there and talk to everybody on there and, um, I always thought it'd be fun to, to do it. I was curious about it. I was nervous about doing it. Um, uh, I get in certain situations where somebody might be like, Corey, I don't see how you could ever be shy talking to people, but, uh, I do have some anxiety, uh, coming mm -hmm. when I first started going live and going on to other people's shows. But then there were some really cool people, um, that were kind that kind of got my you know, my, my feet wet a little bit. Um, you know, there was, uh, Bob, uh, Bob's Blu-rays. He, he had me, you know, reached out and talked to me a couple of times and had me do some little videos to add into some of his streams. Uh, KB, uh, KB loves movies. Uh, yep. he, he was one of the first actual live streams that I was on. He invited me to be on one of his conversations, you know, like in just some people like that, that were just really great. That made me feel welcome. And, gave me some more encouragement to like, Hey, if this is something that you want to do, you know, what's stopping you, you know, what's stopping you from trying it, you know, and don't, I guess, get past some of the, in a good way, like get past some of those excuses and give it a try. If that's something that you're really thinking about doing. And, um, shortly after being on KB's conversation and having that talk with him, um, it was very short after that. I, I did a test live stream and then I just started jumping into it and I don't know, I'm still, tripping and stumbling as I go and trying to figure it out. Aren't we all? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is all good. Um, yep. You did, you do have a, a very cool show that you've come up with now, the movie club. Thank you. I really, yeah. really enjoy that. Uh, how did that come up? Um, I was trying to think of some things I could do. Uh, if, if I was going to do a live stream, which I've done some pre-recorded videos, but not as many um, I've, I've found, and I still want to get back and get better at that and editing and all that you know, just learn a little bit more about it. But um, I have so much fun with live streams and the interaction with the chat and having a guest on just like this. I, I, I love sitting down and having a talk with somebody. And um, so I've kind of leaned that way. Uh, but the, I was trying to think of what, what I could do. And I don't know what made me pop into my head and whether I could have come up with a better name of the show. But I just kind of like, I always thought of like book clubs where, you know, people would pick a book out to, to read for the month. And you know, they'd come together multiple times through the month and talk about it, share what their experiences have been with it, what they're getting from the book. And I always thought that was cool. And I thought, well, that, that could translate to a movie, you know, we could, 
we could do that with a movie and give me an excuse to be able to have somebody on that I can either I can get to know them better or, you know, get to meet them for the first time, have just a chat with them, but then pick out a movie that uh, a lot of times I'll try to make sure it's on a free streaming service as well and kind of announce what it is. And, you know, if people want to watch it ahead of time, they can, and uh, there's not a money barrier, you know, to be able to check that movie out. Right. Uh, it doesn't always work out that way, but, um, but to do that and I don't know, it just, it just was a fun way to get to know people in the community better, get to have the other side of things, you know, from the being in the chat, but actually being on the stream itself. And, uh, you know, like having you on the show, getting to know you better. And, uh, I, that's been awesome. I, there's been so many great connections that I've had so far with it and I'm still very, very new with it. Yep. I had a great time when I was on your show. Yeah, Let, let's see who's watching this show. We go, yeah. Let's go ahead to the chat and see who's actually here. My guy Pat is here from Half Cheetah Will View. He said, this is going to be fire tonight. I think it will. Uh, Pat will be a future guest. He's going to be on. Uh, it's going to be on uh, is it next month. I think next month we're going to we're going to have Pat on. That man on has some spot. interviews, too, man. He. Pat has some awesome, awesome interviews. He interviews yeah. a lot of industry yeah. folks, a lot of people, a lot of indie filmmakers he yeah. uh, interviews. So he's got some good stuff. And this guy is <laughs> in the chat too. He's on the screen. He's in the chat. Sorry, he's I was everywhere. popping in there saying hi to people. So you might have to skip past some of mine. <laughs> That's all right. Monkey's here. This is Dallin Wilkie, the two kings of late night movies recently. <laughs> Both your picks are always worded with 100% decency. Okay. I'm not sure about that. I, I'm I'm going to hold off on that because, you know, sometimes I got to go a little bit outside the lines. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, sorry, you're going to have to skip past me. I, I couldn't help it. I started jumping in there saying hi to nah, people. It's, it's all good. <laughs> uh, Adrian says, hello. What's going on, Adrian? I saw Adrian over at Fans of Something when I was hey, watching Adrian. that stream earlier. Uh, Faces for Radio says, I'm sorry, we're gonna we're going on at the same time, guys. Have a great show, and I will catch the replay. I'm going to do the same for, for them. Absolutely. Uh, Faces for Radio, if you don't know, you might be familiar with the 4K Lowdown. Anybody that's out there, that's Dave uh, and Rich of Turner Fan 77. They have a great show together. And, yeah, they started up the same time we did tonight. I usually watch uh, their stuff, and they usually watch mine. So. I try to jump out into theirs as much as I can as well. And they put out a lot of great, they're, they're great guys. They're another one that uh, you probably have a lot of people like that too, where it's like, they were an early one that had me on. Not that I'm like known now, but when I was like even smaller, I'm small, but even smaller than what I was. And, you know, it's just some, some people like that. They're like, you know, where I was like, I'm sorry, you not that I'm going to bring a whole lot to, you know, like following into your show. They're like, I don't care. We just want to talk to you. And that's yeah. kind of the attitude I've tried to keep with this too. It's like, I want to have a talk with this person and hang out. I don't care if there's one or 500 people in the chat. I mean, yeah, that, I care if they're in there, but you know what I mean? I'd have that conversation yeah. with them regardless. And, and for, for them and for me, and I know KB feels the same way. It's not about, you know, I'm not having on other people just so I can, uh, get followers from right. them or get subscribers from them. Right. I'm, I'm, I generally want to talk to the person I'm talking to. So it doesn't really matter how many subs you have. You could have one, you could have zero, you could have 10,000. Yep. If I watch your stuff and, you, and you're interesting, I think you have something to say about movies. Hey, I want to talk to you. Completely. Tiana is in the chat. She says, hey, everyone. I'm going to skip over you for a second. <laughs> yeah, skip over here. me all you want. <laughs> <laughs> Holland, hey. what's going on, man? Hey, Holland. Stacy is here. She's making a blockbuster night. Hey, hey, hey everyone. What's going on, Stacy? It's been a while. Stacy is a former guest. Going to have to have, get Stacy back at some point. Uh, a recent guest, CC Clemens, is here. What's going on, CC? Yeah, I was checking that one out. I, that was there's been a couple where I've been busy on those nights and I've had to go back and do replays, but I have been catching up on that one. So, yeah, yeah, she's got a great channel, and I thought it was a great time when we had our movie swap. Jeff is here. Yo, what's up, hey, everybody? Jeff. Two of my favorite people. Jeff is another person we got to meet. That's right. Yep. That's right. You got to spend a lot more time with him because you stayed at the the Airbnb. So for anybody out in the chat who's not aware of what happened, uh, a, a bunch of blue tubers, uh, Bob of Bob's Blu-rays, Tony from Basement Blues, uh, Tim Tim Talks Talkies, Ryan from Movies with Ryan, Jeff from John Do uh, John Do 
and I'm missing people I know. Corey, of course. Yep. There's Johnny. What's Johnny watching? Thank and, you. What's Johnny? Johnny. Yep. And Jeff. Yeah, we had Jeff here, and uh, yeah, there's there was a nice big group there. Tony, I can't yes, remember. So, so they kind of came in from wherever they are in the country, and they came went into Tennessee, and a bunch of them stayed in a big Airbnb. I'm a little. Fr I'm a, on the in North Carolina, and so I drove up to Asheville because they were coming to Asheville to go to Orbit DV DVD. So I came to Asheville from where I am and met up with those guys. And you guys stayed a, a weekend at an Airbnb together. So you guys, you got to really spend time with Jeff and all the others. Yeah, it was a great time. Uh, it was fun hanging out and we stayed up too late talking. Nothing crazy, but man, it was funny how you get talking um, with a big group of people like that, that you have a similar interest and have fun with. And next thing you know, the it's like, ooh, probably yeah. should go to bed so we can get a couple hours of sleep before you <laughs> like, get man, going the, the next sun, day. The sun's coming up. Yeah. What's, what's happening? It was almost like nothing wild and crazy. Just you start having those talks and it was like all of a sudden the time flies by. Yep. Yep. There we go. Collect the movie, man. He says, hey, Coriandel, what's going on? Hey there. Thank you for joining us. Absolutely. Uh, Jeff says, yeah, Corey, us North Carolinians will welcome you back anytime. So uh, Jeff lives pretty close to Orbit DVD, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think it's, I guess I don't know how close, but it didn't seem like it was too bad of a trip for him. So yeah, he said anytime I wanted to come back there and go shop and he'd meet me there. So I was like, I might have to yeah. take some people up on that sometime. And I, I also follow him on Instagram. I saw that he went back and had another haul. So he posted that. Yeah, I think uh, of which there's, yeah, there's Ryan he says it was a great trip. Glad I got to meet you both. Absolutely. Yep. Cody uh, from Film Addiction. He was another one that uh, was out there. Cody and Emily. Cody, that's his right, wife. Cody. And they just did another trip out there with a buddy of his that's starting up a YouTube channel. So that's that's pretty cool to see. Yep. Cool. Being close to orbit is a double edged sword for sure. Yeah, we talked about it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, we definitely talked about it. I, I, I would love it being close, but I would hate it being close as well. Uh, he says, sorry, y'all, but the best McKay's is the one in Chattanooga. I, I, I want to get there one day. I don't I I'll try it out in there. So I'll try I it out. Check it out. So that will be cool. All right. We got a bunch of haze going back and forth. Glad to see everybody out in the chat uh, tonight. Oh, there's there's a, a new face here. Z's Gaming and Home Theater Channel. Good evening, everybody. Thanks for coming out, uh, Z's. I'm glad you're here. Yeah, I hope good you to see enjoy you, what you see. If you're not sub to Corey, go sub to Corey. And if you're not sub to Dell, sub to Dell. <laughs> Only if you like it while you're here. <laughs> Only if you like it. Film Addiction is There's here. Cody. Cody right there. Yeah. He, he, says, hey, he says hey to us both. And I'm looking to see if there's anybody else who popped in. Oh, and I think I, I see a couple. Like, a, I see double feature podcast. Mika I, and yep, I just scrolled over it. There they are. There's Mika. Says, hey, Stacy. Then Tony, I think, dropped in here. I was just flipping through. Yep. Uh, question from Z's. How many movies and TV shows you have in your collection? Uh, you want to take a swipe at that one first? Hmm. I, and I had never have claimed to have like a gigantic collection. I mean, it's larger than some people, but it's definitely not topping out like what you see on, on some, some people's I I'm, I don't know about TV shows. I don't have seen anything really good to track that. I do have some sets with it, but I'm probably pushing about the, for movies, probably about the 700 range okay. ish. I mean, okay. so, I mean, a lot more than some, but a lot less than others, but it's, yeah, uh, yeah. I try to kind of keep it within a certain area and, um, we'll see if it, it might get bigger. There, there's been some paring down over the years. So I was probably more, but then I did a, and I kind of wish I didn't do it now, but a little while back, I, I did a purge of my DVDs and some things like that, but I dropped the number down. Yeah. Good for you. That's self-control that, that trying to stay in a certain, uh, around a certain amount. <laughs> That's hard. good self-control. I wish I had it. Um, I, <laughs> if you, if we're counting spines and boxes, I'm around 1900 total. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, but yeah, that, like you said, though, it's a lot more than some, but a lot less than others. Yep. Yeah. No, I, I still love it. I just, uh, like I said, I, We'll see. I, like I said, I've never based anything that I'm doing on saying I got this crazy big collection right, that nobody right, can match, right. but most everything that I got in here, I I've really liked, or I just haven't watched it yet. And I'll have to determine whether I like it or not. And then after that, I kind of figure out if, you know, if I have any buddies that want to check it out, I'll, I'll, you know, we do some trading and some swapping of movies sometimes, or 
you know, or even just give away or something. But yeah. And just to finish answering Z's question for me, those are movies. Um, I'm less than 50 TV shows. That that's for sure. Um, oh, for full I, series, I'm definitely under 50. I'd say that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's for sure. Under 50. Uh, we'll have to hit up orbit when we visit family this summer. Sure. Oh, nice. Sure. That would be a great trip. Uh, caveman is here or a guy, a hey guy. guy says, Hey to everyone, please hit the, <laughs> hit the like button for the two sexiest NPR voices on YouTube. I, I can't compete with Corey. So I, uh, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I, I've, I've heard you say about me in the past, how, how I, I've, I've seen calm and collect. Oh, absolutely. Lot, but it can definitely be said of you. Oh, that I, is for sure. I, I won't argue. I'll I'll take a compliment and say thank you. But um, man, there's been so many times where I was starting out that um, I just would watch yours and I was like, I wish I had that calm collected. You just seemed like you're ra- relaxed and nothing was rattling you. You know. <laughs> Hopefully, we're not too calm. We're gonna not put anybody to sleep out <laughs> That's there. Right. That's right. That's right. Hey, Mel. Uh, yeah, Mel. Not an NPR voice, but the greatest laugh on YouTube. Oh, hands down. Hands down. No competition. Best laugh right there. I'm going to tell you what, some of the best YouTube, though, is not act, is Mel, but not actually on her own channels. When Bob plays that loop of her just laughing <laughs> over and over, that is and the greatest. I'm sure she'll probably disagree with you on that, but <laughs> <laughs> she might not agree with it. But Mel was another one that I actually got to meet in real life, too, um, last year. Oh, in, cool. uh, yeah, in Iowa. So um, a couple of people traveled into the Iowa area and uh, did a meet up and got to meet her for a little bit. So, yeah, that was very cool to meet her in real life. All right, so so I'm I'm gonna ask, and she says, "Holy moly, Stacy's in the chat." LOL. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask, is she as as uh, charismatic and and lively in person? She is the exact same person you see, and <laughs> so it's not, not a, a fake. Good. She's not faking one thing. She's just fun, happy person. Like the whole time I was around her, she just was. I don't know. She's no. There's nothing fake about her. She's just a good. <laughs> person just hanging out having fun great attitude i love being around her all right tony is here speaking of more people who were on that trip tony what's up hey tony all he's right. another yep anyway sorry I, I was gonna say every single person that pops up you can be like oh that's a cool person that's a cool person that's a cool person no yeah there he is it's cory will hit a thousand being friends with all of us bad influences <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah in my collection yeah absolutely oh yeah absolutely uh more hellos of uh, Stacy saying hi to, to Mel. I almost forgot how this works. It's good to see Stacy. I haven't seen him in a while, so very happy to see you out. And we could be doing this all night. I, I do see one other person, Chris C, the slasher dude. Oh, Chris C. Hey, flash that light. What's going on, Chris? Glad you made it. All right, so let's go ahead and get started on the actual reason why we're here. <laughs> yeah. And that is to talk movies, the movies we swap. So go ahead. I'm going to give you the big screen and let everybody know what movie you had me watch. All right. Here we go. I'm not great at running down movies, so I apologize. I had time, but I picked out The Man from Nowhere for you to watch for our movie swap. Uh, this was a new one that was newer to me as well. But when I was throwing out a couple suggestions, I think you kind of you took to this one quite a bit because you said you already had it on the shelf and been meaning to watch it and kind of gave the excuse to to go out and see it. But um, I have fallen down. I don't know if you say the rabbit hole, but there's been so many great movies that I've been able to discover from, um, you know, Asian cinema, you know, Korea, Japan, China that um, are just awesome. I kind of got over my little, uh, I don't know, stigma of subtitles on some movies and now I don't mind it at all. It took a little bit, but I had so much fun with this movie. Um, I don't know if you want me to get into it at all right now, yeah, but just, just uh, give us a basic overview of the plot. So basic overview, this, this gentleman right here, he is basically coming from a very dark past. It's, it's maybe a story you've heard a little bit before, but he's definitely had some type of military training, some like kind of like, black ops type of um, undercover type of uh, military actions has a very set big set of skills, but it's kind of like he just checked out. He he did not want that lifestyle anymore, got out of it and is basically running a pawn shop out of this very low income area in, in this apartment complex. It almost seems like, and just trying to lay low and just live his life. And there's 
he kind of happens upon a situation with one of the tenants in there with a drug situation, gangsters, and then this little girl, that lady's daughter getting involved with it. And he gets pulled back into the action a little bit. So you might kind of think of a John Wick almost type of story where they're trying to get out of the lifestyle and there's something where they didn't think they were going to have that feeling for somebody again. And it draws them back into the fold. And um, he's basically trying to, I guess, rescue her or seek revenge. Um, you know, if something bad happens to her. Yep. I, I just have it on Blu-ray here. Yeah. And so I, when I saw you post the, the 4k the other day, I got jealous. <laughs> so, but it, it looked pretty good on, it looked pretty good on Blu-ray. And I'm, I'm sure, sure not as good as that 4k, but uh, yeah, it's a lot of John Wick in this movie. It's, um, but it was made in 2010. So yep, it's before a, John Wick. Yep. Right. Before John Wick. So it's not a rip off. Nope. Uh, in fact, I would, I would hazard a guess that the people behind John Wick have heard of this movie. I would say, I would say yes. I would yeah, say yes. I, I would, absolutely. I would say yes. Even the outfit is oh, yeah. very similar the black to suit. John Wick. Just straight black suit. Yep. When he when he gets into gets into that that mode. Oh yeah. Um, and what what do you think of our, our our main guy here, especially at the beginning of the movie? You know, at first I was kind of wondering which way it was going to go. He didn't. He seems pretty cold. You know, there's some situations where this little girl is definitely in a bad home. Um, her mom's uh, a drug addict and um, maybe abusive, but at the very least neglecting her. And um, it's a little girl kind of on her own, kind of raising herself. And there's, there's a couple little situations where he could have jumped out and helped her out a little bit with police or, you know, like little situations, but he just would kind of draw back and would didn't offer that help up right away. So, you know, right off the bat, I wasn't getting a great feeling about him, uh, yeah. but you kind of figure out it uh, as it kind of goes along that he probably just had a really, um, he, he had some dark, dark times in his past and he just didn't want to deal with anything ever again. So whether he cared for somebody and lost them or just situations like that, friends being killed and, you know, if he was in like a military type situation, um, he just was not really willing to put himself in a spot where he was going to care for somebody again. Yeah. I, I was like, when I was watching it in the, in the beginning, I was just like, I feel for it for him, even though I don't know much about him because mm -hmm. the whole vibe that I was getting off of him is yeah. First he's had a lot of things happen in his past. That was the first vibe I got. And then the second one was like, I, I'm just trying to mind my business. Will you please, will everyone please just leave me alone? I'm yeah. Just he just wants to live his life. And yes. And just, just, they just couldn't do it. You know? No, the, right. And, and he, you know, he had a, he developed a liking for the little girl, but he wasn't really trying to be warm with her. I, I would, I would say, cause it's so cold. Like you said, right. Is a good description. Um, so he didn't mind having her around, but he, he wasn't really trying to uh, be an influence on her life or anything other than, okay, mom is out doing whatever she's doing. You can hang out here for a while. Yeah. And, and you, you give her some food or, you know, whatever to, right. So, right, so he wasn't right. completely horrible to her, but just, there was a couple situations where he kind of gave her the cold shoulder a little bit. Yeah. He was, he was uh, emotionally closed off, I, I guess. Would be right. The, yep. The, to use a term we use more now. He was, you know, he was there for her, you know, to help and look out if she needed something at a, at a time. And, but he was like, he wasn't trying to be available to her in that way. And, um, what, what'd you think of the little girl? Um, you know, she was, you could see she was a, she was resourceful. She was trying to, she was in a bad situation and she was, you know, she still loved her mom. There was times where things started happening where, she still cared what happened to her and that bothered her. But, you know, there was a lot of times her mom was pretty, um, I don't know, just would neglect her and not be really nice to her. And so she was in a tough situation and very poor, I think, and just wasn't provided for. So she was doing the best she could to, to survive. So, you know, she were, there were some situations where she was uh, shoplifting from stores, you know, whether mm -hmm. it was food or little things. Um, but, um, you could tell she was for as young as she was, she was fighting to survive. I mean, she was doing what she needed to do to get by day to day. 
Yeah. And for people in the chat, we're talking about what, about eight years old or so? I, that sounds right. I mean, she was pretty young. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, a, a scene that kind of stuck out to me where my feeling towards him started to turn a bit was like, oh, he's not going to be there for her was the scene where um, the little girl, she got accused of, of uh, beating up a, a little her classmates. Mm -hmm. And um, the mom is standing there with, I, I guess it's the principal of the school or a teacher from the school. Uh, the other kid's mom, not her mom. The other kid's mom is there and just slapping her <laughs> over and, you know, you can't hit my son. And she's just slapping her upside the head. And, yep. uh, and then he ha just so happened to be coming uh, around the corner and see her and she saw him. So she was, she's like, Oh, he's here. He can help me. And kind of points at him like, Hey, that's my dad. And he just kind of looks and turns and walks away. It's yeah. Like, he's basically like, I don't know her. And walks yeah, I don't on. know her. I don't want anything to do with this. So that's when I was like, Oh, maybe, maybe he's not going to be really there for her, or maybe something's going to happen um something drastic would have to happen to change to change and something drastic did happen yeah um you um you want to you tell what that was that the, the drastic thing that happened well what kind of led up to it like her mom was kind of in with somebody else where they where she worked there was drug deals that were going down and I think they got kind of wind of a transaction that was going to happen. And she, you know, took a stun gun to the guy and took the, took the product off, off of him. And, um, I think it was the idea that they were going to split it, make some money, party with it, whatever, but they stole from the wrong people, basically that it was a strong gangster right. organization. Right. There was, there was a theft at the very beginning of the movie that she was involved in. And then she got into it with the guy who, she was working with yep and uh through this and this is you know minor spoiler here but not not a big spoiler uh mom um uh, mom gets unalive to use youtube parlance <laughs> <laughs> yeah she does and the daughter has uh gone missing and that's this is when our hero turns into our hero and he, you know he's got a particular set of skills like we like to say in our movies yep and, and just starts to starts going to work and um so of course i'm a person who's seen all the john wick movies now so right. that's where my mind was and on, on uh, if we're comparing the violence to john wick where do you put that i mean this would go gorier i mean in definite spots bloodier gorier than Definitely. what john wick did um and that's what i found a lot of with the that's where I apologize if I am misspeaking on this one, if it's out of Korea or not, but there's been so many um, Korean films that I've, um, I believe it's South Korea, but there's a lot yes. of the Korean films that I've seen that they don't shy away from showing no. some extra violence, <laughs> like the extra gore, the, you know, like John Wick would believe me, there's guns firing knives coming out and getting stabbed, but this takes to another I'm not saying it's like the more goriest thing I've ever seen, but it takes it to another level. You see a lot more than what you do in a John Wick film. Yeah, yeah. I I, I think with the John Wick, Wick film and a lot of American films, especially John Wick, though, there, there's like so many gunshots and there's so much violence and it's happening so fast and it's per pervasive. You get desensitized and it's not gory. It's, you know, if there's blood in the film, it's like a spurt of blood that, right. you know, you can see, but kind of in the background, it's nothing in your face. Whereas a movie like this, they're kind of putting the camera right up to it and yeah. it, it gets all sorts of messy. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, they, they take, they, it's up a notch, I guess, you know, from the Wick films. Yeah, it, it is. Uh, let's see if anybody in the chat has, uh, has seen or is talking about uh, the man from nowhere. Let me go back up and find. Let's see. Uh, here we go. Uh, th that would be. Oh, I guess they're talking about getting meeting up at um, Orbit DVD. Is what they're talking about. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I see one from Mel. She says, "Ha ha! Don't lie, Corey." LOL. <laughs> I think that's when I was talking about her. I wasn't lying at all. Yeah. She's awesome. Yeah. She's awesome. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, Mel was great. I've had her on as a former guest. We'd like to get her back on one time. I'm sure we could talk more about something else. And she says, "Yo, what's up, to Chris?" 
And here we go. This has been a film on my watch list, says uh, says Mika. Sure. Uh, so, yeah, keep listening keep and see if it'll stay on your list. <laughs> <laughs> And hopefully, I always have such a hard time talking about movies and tiptoeing that line of saying too much about it and not mm-hmm. enough. You know, it's kind of an art to be able to do that on some of these streams. Yeah, it's it's all good. Uh, Cody, the man from nowhere is awesome. Highly recommend. Good. So there's there's one uh, one vote of of from Cody. Yeah. Uh, CC haven't seen this before, but added to my watch list and just for for CC and anybody else out there, but uh, Corey has already mentioned it, but it is a Korean film and it is definitely subtitled. So you yep. play that, you know, take that for what it's worth. I'm like you, I don't really care. Uh, but I know some people, you know, are just not into subtitles or for it- some reason, some people actually have legit medical reasons that they can't with subtitles. Oh, I- so I, I, and I get it, but just so recognize that this is a uh, a, a uh, subtitled movie. Congratulations, Chris C. Chris C. for being nominated for Horror YouTuber of the Month. Oh, congrats! Oh, yeah. Chris. Absolutely, absolutely. I put my vote in already. But uh, just to say, on the 4K anyway, it does have a English dub version on here. If you prefer that. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to read this and then I'm going to ask you about English dubbing in a minute. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Z's question, what kind of category movies do you like? Do you like comedy, sci-fi, adventure? And what are your favorites? Uh, go ahead, uh, Corey, got any favorite genres? So I know everybody probably thinks that I'm just um, trying to take the easy way out with this, but I, I'm such a mood watcher. Like it depends what mood I'm in. So there's, depending on the, the day, uh, so I can say, yes, I like all of those, but it just depends what mood I'm in. I grew up sci-fi and action movies, like 80s into 90s sci-fi and action movies. I absolutely loved, grew up with them, have such a great time with them, but I, I'm really all over the place. I I think more recently started diving into horror movies a little bit more, like over the last probably three or four years. Um, I'm still probably pretty tame compared to what... Uh, some of my friends, uh, what they talk about, some of the movies that they watch, but uh, getting that a little more. But again, I just, I got to be in the mood it, mood for it. I know one time, uh, so Dell, I think uh, when we were on, when you were on my show, um, I think we were talking about how, and I think we went too late and you said, well, maybe I won't get to watch it now. But, you know, I was like, I got home one night and I was like, I just didn't want to have to put much effort into watching something. I'm like, I put in Commando, you know, Schwarzenegger Commando. And I was like, you know, it's like, it's one that I've seen a million times. If I don't finish it, it's not the end of the world. I know how it ends, but right. it doesn't take a lot of effort, but it just entertains me, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm, I, I'm like you, I think all of us eighties kids, you know, sci-fi and action. <laughs> That's what oh, we were yeah. raised on. And then I, I was also raised on slasher flicks okay. at the time. So I was, you know, big into horror growing up. Um, if you if I had to pick my favorite, I was, was also big into martial arts. I talked about that. And oh, yeah. past March, I've just watched a boatload of them uh, just for March. Um, and a lot of people know that I'm a superhero uh, movie fan. So, yeah, no, I do. I do love those, too. So I didn't have access to as many. So when I'm, you know, so I didn't have a whole lot to choose from. But I remember um, Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris. I loved, you know. <laughs> Yeah, there was yeah. a couple of their films I had access to and would watch those quite a bit. Yeah. Chuck Norris doesn't do pushups. He pushes the earth down. As they say. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's Steve right. is here. What's up, Steve? He says, Hey, hey y'all, Steve. I picked this one up on a sale, but haven't gotten around to it yet. Cool. Well, hopefully we'll give you some uh, good insight on it. Uh, Caveman. He always comes with the knowledge on where to find these movies. The man from nowhere is on Peacock and Netflix. Just FYI cool so that's cool i didn't know it was on either one peacock has some great selection especially into the some of the korean films when i started diving into those they have an amazing selection of them they don't blast it on their home page you know the, right. the front page but you can if you dig a little bit there's a lot of gems in there yep holland says i remember liking this one been a couple of years all right so i did say i was going to ask you about english dubbing since we were talking about yeah talking about that would um since you started watching subtitles, I know you said you kind of took a bit to get into that. Yeah. Have you tried to go back and watch an English dubbed movie? 
I haven't, um, but I do remember the switching point. Um, so I'll, I'll just admit I'm, I'm a slower reader. It takes mm -hmm. me a little bit longer. So there's sometimes even now, like, so when I was watching, rewatching this one, uh, before this stream, I, there was a couple times I had to back it up for a second. Cause I'm, I missed some, something and I'm like, right. I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything too important of what they were saying. So I still get caught with that a couple times. If the dialogue is really fast, I'll, I'll have to back it up a little bit, but I used to always be English dub. And then I don't know what it was, but there was, I think it was when I was watching, um, it's been a while ago, but it was trained to Basan mm -hmm. where the voices with the English dub, it just was off. I mean, it was yep. just something about, it's funny how I don't know any of these people that are acting in this film, but I'm just like, that's not their voice. It does just it doesn't, be. it can't be their voice. It just, I don't know why, but I, it started bugging me where I'm like, that is not the right voice for that person. So I literally, I didn't go into it too far, but I stopped that movie, restarted it and put it to the, the subtitles and right. watched it all the way through after that. Right. Right. I, we talked about, you talked about Bruce Lee years and years and years ago. And, um, this is one of the few, not very many memories that I have with my, with my father, but we used to, uh, we, we were watching a Bruce Lee movie on TV Yeah, and the, um, I think it was, I think it was way of the dragon. Um, I was really young, like 12, 13 years old, but it was on TV and it was English dubbed. Yeah. And it was, it, when you talk about the voices, they, Bruce Lee never dubbed his own voice for yeah. his movies. Yeah. And at that age, you know, it was just the way that I had always seen the movie. So it was like, you know, I don't, I don't, it didn't register one way or the other to me until he said, he, he was like, he's like, I wonder why they never let him dub his own voice. He speaks English. Right. And then it was like, oh, wait, what the hell <laughs> What's happening here? So that's not, that's not Bruce Lee's voice. And so, yes, ever since then, whenever I watch the dub movie, it's like, yeah, that's not their voice but it is fun because some of the older art martial arts some of the other martial arts movies that i would watch on tv you know the voice is just so outrageous you just have to yeah. have fun with it um but yeah i i get it uh back to the movie at hand though yeah, yeah, yeah. um how did how did you think uh what did you think about the pacing of the movie it's not a very long movie no so what did you think about the pacing of it i think it went really well um it started off I wouldn't say like slow, but a little bit slower, but it, once the action started in, it was kept a pretty good pace. I thought through the rest of it, I guess I never, it definitely wasn't one that I ever paused and wondered how much was left of the movie. You know, if that says anything, mm -hmm. like I have some movies, even ones that I like that I've, you know, paused just to see like, okay, how much is left of this? And I didn't do that at all with this one. So. Right. Um, for, for me, that was where I had a bit of an issue. Cause I thought it kind of, I, I thought it stopped to explain things too many times, okay. a, a couple of times, too many times. It was like, okay. At the beginning, I expected it to be slow. I wasn't really worried about that. Yeah. Once we got cranked up, then it was like, okay, we'd have to stop. And one character or another would just, just drop a bunch of exposition and right. kind of bog the movie down. And then we get started again and then it would happen again. So that was like my my major issue I can uh, see that. with the film um but overall uh the it, it it wasn't to the point where i was i got bored but it was right. just like all right when are we gonna you know when is the next thing gonna happen the next thing needs to start happening now so i i thought they could have paced it a little better tightened up the script a little bit so that um it flowed a little bit better so it and i said it wasn't long it's actually it actually is a two hour movie. Um, oh, it didn't feel that long, I guess, you know, yeah, just rewatching it. But yeah, and I, I thought if they had chopped it to a to a one forty five hour, forty five would have been been a sweet spot for it. So not like chopping out a whole bunch of the movie, but just tighten it up some of those dialogue situations, just yeah. make them a little tighter in those spots. And yeah, that that's kind of that that's where I was. And that kind of leads me to the to the writing of it. it it's um overall the story works fine it's a pretty simple story pretty straightforward you know yeah uh, we laid it all out there it's just the way they advanced the plot i thought was just a little a little clunky uh, like uh, okay we we could have 
you know, done it through other means or shorter means or something like that. But overall, pretty well written uh, yeah. movie. Um, it was, it was really the acting that kind of got me or kept me involved in the story. Yeah, which for an action movie, doesn't always do that. Um, there was we talked about our main guy and we talked about the little girl and I I thought they were both really good actually. Yeah. I thought they both did a great job. So that's where I def, like I said, I couldn't argue your point of tightening up some of those situations to shorten it just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Some of those dialogue scenes maybe, but, um, but I agree. I, I think they both did a really good job with their roles and I thought they did well together too. It's, I think it's always kind of tough with a younger kid in some of those um, in some movies, but uh, no, I thought, thought they did a great job. Yeah. I, I, I think she, she did a good job because it's tough with kids because especially a role like hers because she's meant to be annoying to him mm -hmm. but you don't want her annoying to us right <laughs> and i thought that she did a good job with that and the whole everybody around the film because obviously she didn't just do that on her own right um you know everybody involved in the film did a good job of making that the case where we could tell you know even though yes he was kind of there for and doing things for her but she he was she was a bit annoying to him but not to us. And we developed some sympathy for her pretty quick. I, I mean, she, she had a great set of puppy dog eyes. That's for sure. Oh, no <laughs> doubt. No doubt. Yep. No <laughs> so doubt. That, that they just kind of melt your heart right away. And, um, and then the whole situation with her mom and uh, the, the, the lady who played her mom is, was actually also, I thought really good mm -hmm. um, at, at being horrible, but she was, Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. But she was really good. Yeah. No, I thought they all did a really good job to get me to feel very sympathetic to the little girl, you know, to, not that you wouldn't in a situation like that, but like you said, trying to make her so she's annoying to, you know, our, our lead act or lead guy, but not annoying to us and right. still feel sympathy for her. Right. Yeah. Yeah. She, you, we definitely, definitely felt for her. And then what happens later on in the movie it, and, you know, it's like, oh man, another thing is happening to her. And, it's, <laughs> and you just, you just can't help, but, you know, feeling for her and, and rooting for him to get there for her, for her. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then I'm just sitting there and it's like, if I would have gone through all that at that age, I would have been so messed up. You know, oh, no kidding. In. No kidding. <laughs> she, she's got years of therapy ahead, no matter what, no matter what she's got years of therapy ahead. Because <laughs> that was that was pretty pretty rough. Any adult going through all that would <laughs> have yeah. a hard time, let yeah, alone no a little kid like that. But so, um, not to jump ahead, maybe you're going to talk about this anyway. But yeah, go or, for it. Go, uh, so you, I know you you love your martial arts. Huh? I can see box sets behind you right now. Yes. <laughs> and we've talked about it before. I love action martial arts as well. What did you think of the fight scenes and how they set them up and the, you know, choreographing them? I thought they were good, um, but I didn't look at them as martial arts, not a strict, not that kind of sure. martial arts. No, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But again, more on a John Wick level type of martial arts, because that, I mean, when John Wick's fighting, it is martial arts, no, make no mistake about it. Yeah. Um, I, I thought that occasionally the camera was a little too tight. Mm hmm um, but overall, they did a pretty good job with it. They did a really good job with it. And, you know, in in, in a movie like this, it was, I, I was less impressive, like the moves they were doing for, for in that kind of thing. It was more impressive, the damage they were doing to sure. each other. Sure. That was, that was the, the exciting part of it for me. Yeah. It's like, you know, something happens and you kind of wince. You go, oh, that, that's wow that happened <laughs> oh so. there was multiple times i did that and yes i agree with you it's completely different than what you got in those box sets behind you but i think some of those movies though where they it's more than just a a brawl i mean there's yes that you can tell that there was a lot of thought put into this fight and these multiple people coming at this one guy and mm -hmm. him using some of the resources that are around him to you know, fight against these, you know, everybody that's whatever's coming against them at that time. And, but I agree, there's like multiple times where I was wincing a little bit where I was like, Ooh, yeah, yeah. They, 
there were some pretty brutal parts in there too. Or, so, so he's our, our hero. He's trying to find out if this girl's alive and if she is, you know, to be able to save her. But there was like multiple times where he wasn't just, he wasn't just necessarily just taking out his opposition at that time. He was, it almost seemed like putting fear into the others that were still in the room as well too. Cause there, there was yeah. a couple of times where I just remember him like, you know, grabbing somebody, he's got them where they can't hurt him anymore. And he's looking at the rest of them in the room and he'll jab a knife in them a couple yep. times, <laughs> look at the rest of them and do it a couple more times yep, before he gets rid of them. Yeah. Oh, he's just yeah. like rubbing it in just a little bit. And they're just standing there. Like they can't do anything about it, but it's just, putting that fear factor into oh yeah oh yeah the rest of them it, in the room it goes back to what you said about especially south korean cinema you know they're not afraid to go there with the gore so it's like you know if we can get a few more stabs and spurts of blood on the screen we're gonna do it so, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> you know there was a few different times like that too where i was just like yeah he's just not like get the threat away from me it's like do some damage and then also there's three other guys in the room here put fear into them before they're coming after me, you know, after I get rid of this guy. Right. Right. Yeah. Cause the, and yeah, it, it's, it's, we're used to it in a lot of our movies and we keep going back to John wick and, and mm -hmm. I apologize to anybody listening going, Oh, you keep bringing up John wick. But <laughs> when you watch the movie, it's hard not to. Yeah. It's hard not to. Yeah. It, it's hard not to. Um, but we're, we're used to in a movie like that. And even something like Commando, you talked about Commando a little bit earlier. You know, yeah, there are hordes of bad guys coming after one guy. But he basically, it's, you know, you deal with a guy for a couple of seconds and dispose of him and move on. The, mm -hmm. That's what the hero usually does. You know, he, even whether he kills him or not, it's, it's okay, boom, boom, boom. We move on to the next guy. And that guy is nowhere to be found or never to be heard from again in the movie. Um but here, you know, first you deal with that guy, you throw him off to the side, you know, after you've stabbed him a few times, he gets back up because he's, he's not giving up. So then you have to stab him a few more times and everybody else is looking. So like you said, yeah, we got to make sure nobody else really wants to mess with me and yeah, you got to get him a few more times yeah. or slit well, his throat, snap his neck, whatever you got to do. Well, it's almost like he would use somebody that he almost he could have just finished them off and got rid of them but he almost uses them for a little bit in those fight scenes as well too so there was like some situations where he'd get a guy down he was dragging them still yeah. fighting a few of the other people and then would go back to him whoever he was dragging on the ground for a little bit and yeah. kind of go back and forth and i don't know i some babe, somebody can just be like oh it's just fighting and violence but it's i thought it was creative how they did some it's of the things in the fight very scenes. creative very creative uh in the violence department that's for sure very yeah. creative um i'm just gonna jump into the chat here we got a few new faces that have oh popped yeah go in. for it uh tracy has popped in hey tracy hey tracy hey and i still need to get tracy on she was she's been on my channel once but it wasn't for a movie swap so i got to get her for one of these uh one of these days yeah awesome i would love to have her on my channel as well but she's got a great show that i tune into once in a while absolutely Absolutely. Jane Doe is here. Jane Doe Lexi hey, says, Mom. hello, everyone. Hey, <laughs> thank you for uh, hopping on the channel tonight, hopping in the chat. And uh, we got, hey, Mama Doe. So we, we got people talking to her, which is great. She says, hey, caveman. Let's see if we got any other comments about it, uh, about the movie here. Uh, Holland, that's what I remember not liking. My one nitpick was too many cuts during action sequences. Yeah. Like I said, the camera for me, it was, it was a it was a little tight. It wasn't so bad, the cutting, as I've seen in some other movies. Um, but they did cut it. There, there were a few too many edits sometimes. So, yeah, Holland is, is correct on that, at least in my opinion. I can see that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Tracy always heard this film was great, but never saw it. Yeah, I would say give it a go. And uh, I noticed a lot of influences on the waterfront had on John Wick after I watched it for the first time recently. And and it's, it's that way with a lot of movies. I mean, you start seeing other movies and you go, oh, that's where they got it from. Or, oh, you know, this is so similar to, to whatever thing. And you get to see what the filmmakers who made your favorite movie were watching when they made it. So and I think that's the case here. I have I still haven't seen on the waterfront. I need to see it. But I have not either. When I was watching this. Uh, the man from nowhere is like, oh, okay. I, I see a lot there. Uh, the, you were going to say it looks like. I was just gonna say it's kind of crazy when you watch. So maybe a lot of people ha have seen John Wick, and then they go to watch this movie, 
it's almost weird. I've ran into that a couple times where you, you're more uh, familiar with the newer movie. You go watch an older film that you're almost like, Hey, they're copying the new film. And you're like, wait yeah. a minute, that, ca that yeah. can't be because this <laughs> came like so much before the other movie, but it's weird to, I guess, stumble upon some of those movies where they were getting some of that inspiration from, or some ideas from. Um, yeah. Yeah. There, absolutely. There's quite a few of those. Absolutely. The, it, um, one of my earliest movie swaps actually was with Nick movie avian post. Shout out to Nick. If you watch yeah. the replay, I know truck driver life, he's probably asleep now. Um, but I had him watch a movie called Lady Snowblood, and he's a big Quentin Tarantino fan. So he watched Lady Snowblood, and was his mind was kind of blown by all the stuff that was ripped from Lady Snowblood for Kill Bill. So oh yeah, 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 yeah. So it it happens a lot. Yeah, like you said, and if you're not careful, you find yourself like, oh, they're ripping off the newer movie, but obviously, I know. Uh, but I've done that before. Where I watch the older one, and they're like, they're ripping it off, and I'm like. And then I sit there and like, think for a second, like, okay, Corey, this was made decades before the one you think it's ripping. And then you're like, okay, it's the other way around. But that's like your knee jerk reaction when you watch it. But yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, that, that looks so familiar. Why does that look so familiar? And then you, you think about it. All right. So not, not to go way off topic, but just yeah. while I'm thinking about when we're talking about that, uh, have you seen Shawshank Redemption and Escape from Alcatraz? I've not seen Escape from Alcatraz. I've seen Shawshank about six times. But okay. I've not just seen Escape from Alcatraz yet. So if you ever watch Escape from Alcatraz, let me know if you have that feeling between the two of them or not. Okay. You have just bumped it up my watch list because it's been on my watch list forever. Okay. So you bumped it up. I I, I do want to want to see that. Okay. Um, now and see what's uh what's what with that. And then you can say, Corey, you're crazy. You don't know what you're talking about, or you can be like, Oh, I see what you're saying. But okay. <laughs> okay. I'll definitely check it out. All right. So as far as the man from nowhere goes, is there anything else that uh, we didn't touch on that you wanted to bring up about the movie? I'm no, I mean, kind of, like you said, it's always that uh, balance of going into it too much, but um, are we, are we talking about what we overall, what we thought about this, if it's a recommendation or not at this sure, point? Go for or, it. Cause uh, that was, that, that's going to be my next thing, but go ahead. Go, go oh, go for it. it. No, you go. Well, I'll, I'm going to finish it out because this is the movie that you recommended for me. So I'm going to okay. finish out with my thoughts. Uh, you go ahead with your thoughts on it. So I would say this is a highly recommended movie to me. If you like action, if you don't mind violence, um, that, like I said, if you if you like John Wick, you, you're going to see the similarities between the, the two of them. And definitely this came first. So um, this is more the original. But as long as you're okay with it, like we were talking about earlier, uh, it ups the ante a little bit with the the blood or the gore, the violence in it uh, compared to like a John Wick movie. But um, I think this movie got hyped up really, really high for me before I watched it the very first time. And it didn't ruin it for me. But, you know, sometimes that takes just a little bit off because you're going into it with such high expectations. I think it happened a little bit with me on this one. But that being said, I still really enjoyed it. And I would, if you're into those types of movies, I would recommend it, you know, hands down. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So for me, um, I would also highly recommend this movie. I really did enjoy this movie. Um, not a perfect movie. Um, like I said, for me, the big drawbacks, uh, one was the pacing was just a little off for me. So I, I thought it could have been a little shorter than the, than the runtime. Um, sure. like I said, 10, 15 minutes, if they, you know, tighten that up would have been great. And then on some of the fight scenes, it was just a little over edited camera was a little tight. Um, but yeah, they're definitely going to give you lots of blood and guts during those fight scenes. So it's, it is a fun time, uh, in that way, if you're into that kind of thing, uh, again, I did say subtitled, so I'm just throwing that back out there just so in, you don't forget. But it, it is a really good movie. I really uh, enjoyed it and had a good time with it. So I will definitely uh, return to watching The Man From Nowhere. And, and like you said, there are similar similarities to John Wick. And I, I if you I don't want anybody to get the impression that we're we're bashing John Wick and saying that it's a bad movie. Now, all of a sudden, it's just a ripoff. That's not at all what what I'm saying. I don't think Corey's saying that either. No. Nope. Um, so I, I still do love the John Wick movie. So don't be like, oh, my God. So John Wick is just a ripoff. No, don't do that. Um, see both. 
uh, if, if you've probably already seen John Wick, most of the people in this chat, and if you're on watching the replay and you haven't seen the John Wick movie, see those. Those are fantastic. Oh, yeah. But uh, definitely I would check out uh, The Man From Nowhere also. So uh, great pick, Corey. Really, really enjoyed it. Well, I'm glad it wasn't one you <laughs> you had a hard time getting through. But, but like you said, no. not trashing on John Wick at all. You can see influences, I think, from this movie to John Wick. But that's not a bad thing. It's just like when we were talking about, you know, like even other movies or music or it, it, there's so many things that everything influences things that come after it. So yes. that that's not a knock if you're like, I can see influences in this movie that I think came from man from you know man from nowhere but that that's not a knock on it i mean that's just like with any film any music everything is influenced by something you know and they're just pulling from different you know things that they were that they maybe loved or you know listened to or watched while they were and just grabbed gravitated to that and want to pull it into their own project as well so it's not oh, a bad thing oh, yeah. just, i know. mean no no matter what your favorite movie is it stole from something else more than likely. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's okay. It well, happens. That's when you think you, you were talking about Tarantino, um, nothing yeah. against him, but man, when I went into a lot of those, that was another one where I started seeing older films that I'm like, Oh, wait a minute. That's, yeah. I yeah. can see that right there. And yeah. If you, especially if you're a Tarantino fan, he's stolen from a whole lot of places blatantly at that and and not, not to say he's not a he's he's not a good filmmaker because he's he's taking those things his in his uh inspiration his influences and incorporating them into his work like you just said yeah and he, he's putting uh, at least a bit of his his own twist on it with him his for me his strength is always you know the the dialogue you know he oh yeah yep it's it's that is his strength that is added to it to make us get us invested in the characters so it works. Um, it, it's just that funny though. Once you start seeing some of those older movies, it's like, oh yeah, wait, I've seen that before. I've seen that before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. Before we get to the next movie, I do want to acknowledge uh, my man Adam, the movie hunter, is here. He says, "What's hey, up, Adam. everyone? My kids' game's over, so I'm checking in. Did he win, Adam? Adam's uh, son is baseball player. All right. Uh, so let us let us know if he won. I hope hope he won. Hope we got a couple hits starting the season yeah. off right. Absolutely." Yeah, I can't believe yeah. we're already there. Oh regular, yeah, regular oh, yeah. season starting up and balls ball games are going. Oh yeah, definitely. You know, we're not even to summertime. Mm -hmm. Definitely want to watch this one, Adam. I being a being a being a guy that you are, I think you would enjoy this one. I, I think you would really enjoy this one. So I would yeah. definitely give it a try. Definitely check it out. All right, so I, let's go ahead and get into the other movie. And the movie, I'm going to go big screen for just a moment. Yeah. So I, the movie that I had Corey watch was this one, Maggie. And this is Arnold Schwarzenegger on the front and uh, Abigail Breslin as his daughter. And this is a zombie movie, a post-apocalyptic zombie movie. So the, the zombie apocalypse has already happened. It's been going on for some time. Uh, the world has kind of gotten used to it. Uh, so it's it's not where it's like Train Busan Corey brought up earlier where it just happened and everybody is everybody's just finding out and getting eaten right away. No, nope, this this thing has been going for a while and uh big cities have been decimated by it. Uh Schwarzenegger and his daughter, uh uh I all of a sudden forgotten Schwarzenegger's character in the movie, his name, so it's Arnold. <laughs> but his daughter, she kind of ran away. She's been, you know, going through some personal things and she has been bitten while she was hanging out in the big city. Uh, so she's infected and has come back home. And in the world of this movie, uh, it usually takes six to eight weeks to change is what we're told. And when you get near to near to the time where the person is starting to uh, change completely over from human to zombie, you are supposed to send them into quarantine where they will live out or the rest of their days or probably be euthanized. And we're watching uh, Arnold and his daughter go through that period of time. And uh, is he going to make that decision? Is he going to send her into quarantine? Is he going to kill her himself? Is he just going to keep her in the house as long as possible? Is she going to infect anybody else in the house? Cause he has a wife and a, a another child uh, that live 
with them. Um, so my my first question to you is, I say Arnold Schwarzenegger and zombie movie. Is this anything like you expected when you put those two things together? No, 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 <laughs> no, not at all. Um, I had a little inkling. I didn't have anything spoiled for me, but from I'd heard a little feedback about this. And so that was, I was really excited. I'll, I'll say that right off the bat to watch this. Cause um, I think it's kind of like what you said, uh, the man from nowhere you had on your shelf and it's like, Oh, that's awesome. I have it here and it gives me an excuse to watch it. I just haven't got around to it. And this is one of those as well that I didn't have at the time, but I was able to pick it up on the, a used copy on our, the, the meetup we were talking about earlier. Right. Yep. Uh, so that was pretty cool. Um, but I saw it and I'm like, I'm going to grab that, but that's one I'd heard about and it intrigued me because I knew something was a little different than what you would think of a, you hear Schwarzenegger zombie. Um, and we were talking about commando earlier, you know, you kind of think of that type of, along those type of lines, you know, right. like guns blazing, throw some grenades or something. And, uh, it, so it's different than what I thought it was going to be, but I knew it wasn't going to be, you know, the action packed Schwarzenegger. Okay. Cause in just, you know, growing up when we grew up in the eighties and like you said, that, that is the image that comes to my mind when you yeah. say, okay, Arnold Schwarzenegger, then you say zombies. Oh, absolutely. I'm, 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 I'm expecting zombie land, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm expecting. Yep. And this was not that at all. Uh, this was a, a, a much more, much more of a character study. Oh yeah. Than uh than anything else, and how how are you on their relationship between father and daughter? Um, well, I'll say this: uh, I have kids. I have a son and a daughter. They're older. Um, my daughter's still in the house. You know, uh, so probably not much different than the age of the 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 girl and supposed to be in this movie. So it was pretty easy for me to put myself in not easy to know what I would do in the situation, but to start having empathy of what they might be going through in that situation. You know, you got that age, we were all there, you know, like when you get to be a teenager, almost out of high school, you have those little power struggle struggles with the, the parents. And there was probably a little bit of that going on. Uh, but then, you know, when something really bad happens, how they deal with it together and, mm -hmm. and work through that. Um, so I, I thought they had a, you know, maybe a little bit of a, um, their relationship wasn't perfect. We'll just say that. Um, so right. the, the, the wife, his wife and the, the other two kids that are in the house with them are step, a stepmom and stepchildren mm -hmm. to her that her mom, Schwarzenegger's character lost, you know, his wife earlier. Uh, maybe in a similar fashion of what was happening with her um, earlier right. on. And I think that added another dynamic to it where there was that struggle of what, what do you do in this situation then? Right. Um, so like, like you said, their relationship wasn't perfect and she was clearly troubled even before, you know, the yeah. events of the movie, because obviously she ran away. Right. And, uh, he, yeah, they they had a kind of contentious, not contentious. I, I might be, but maybe strained, maybe a, a bit of a strained relationship. Yeah, yeah. But he would still do anything for his daughter. Oh yeah. And, and I can definitely see that. No, I can see what you're saying there because there was a strain there. And she, why was she running off to the city? But you know, that's that's at and that's that age too. We were all there at one point where you think you're old enough to be out and independent but you got a lot of growing up to do yet. And we were all at that point. And then you throw into that whole mix, this situation of, like you said, now they're in a role of society has basically zombies among them. And they've come to a, just a understanding how to deal with it basically of how much time it takes them to turn, like you said, and shipping them off. And so you also got to throw in this mix. If you already have in just regular life, a teenager, you know, maybe a senior in high school, you're already going to have some of those tensions with parents <laughs> and authority. You know, it's just, yeah. I was, there, we were all there at one point. You just, it's a natural thing growing up, dealing with that power struggle, but you throw into that, 
you know, she lost her mom. Um, they've probably all known friends or classmates that they've lost from mm -hmm. this. And that, I mean, that throws a whole nother dynamic into it that, you know, I, that we, I mean, luckily can't relate to, but, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like it just, it adds a whole nother level to maybe some of the struggles that, you know, these teenage kids are going through. Right. Right. And, um, you mentioned power struggle. The, the, the real power struggle for me, uh, was between Arnold's character and his, and his wife, his second wife. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And, um, if we can put, if you can put yourself in her shoes for a minute, the wife, do you do the things that she does? Or I hope do you not. Do the opposite. I would hope not. I mean, it's easy to say one way or the other that I do this or I would do that. If you were truly in that situation, I mean, who knows what you would do? I, I hope I would treat it differently, but you could see. So right off the bat, there was like certain situations, like you said, she handled some situations where I did not like her at all. Mm -hmm. I'll just say that. But then there was other situations where she showed a lot of compassion to the daughter that mm -hmm. um, where she didn't want her to get, she knew how severe some situations were for her, but was not letting on to it and, you know, trying to comfort her basically. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't like, oh, she's the evil stepmother, but there were situations I would hope I would handle differently than she did. Okay. So slightly different question though. Okay. In keeping with her though. Yeah. Yeah. Can you blame her? No, no, that's not, that's a tough thing. That's when you have situations like that in movies. It's, I wish I, I would hope I would handle it differently than her, but man, it's hard to blame her though, too. You know, like the, the two younger children I'm taking are her biological children. Yeah. And just like Arnold, you know, his character, and I know I don't, I'm not saying the actual character name, but you know, I'm talking about but Arnold's character. Yeah. How he's in his daughter. Um, and he's gonna, he just wants to do anything he possibly can to, and, you know, he was out, like they say earlier, he was out t for two weeks hunting for her, trying to find where she's at, um, trying to, you know, f figure out what happened to her. He's going to do whatever he possibly can to find her, help, save her, help her or do whatever he can for her. And the, the wife is thinking the same thing for those two younger kids as well. You right. know, they, it's a scary situation. I mean, completely different, completely different level. I'm not going to compare it, but there's some things we won't go into it, but there's been some things in the past four years that have come up that you see people act in different ways than they normally would. And like, I don't want to get into a whole, you know what I'm saying? Like, well, I don't want to, you know what I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm glad you mentioned it. Cause I do want to go there. So, okay. I, okay. I didn't want to like, I didn't want you to be like, no, 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 Corey. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm there with you. Cause, uh, the, the first time I saw this movie was before the pandemic. Okay. Yeah, it's a 2015 movie. I, I saw it maybe 2016, 2017. Okay. So it was before that. Uh, um, and now I'm seeing it again afterwards. So, uh, the, it gave me news perspective, right? And and yeah. like you said, we we see how people acted throughout, you know, since 2020. And yep. you know, people are kind of going back to pre-2020 behavior yeah. now. Um, but you know, it's close enough in our rearview mirror that it's still kind of fresh. Mm -hmm. Uh so did you think of that time while you were watching the movie? Absolutely. No, absolutely. Completely different level. I mean, yeah. So but yeah, no, I, it was hard. There was not a way I could not think of certain things where you can do this, you can't do that. You need to do this with your kid or you need to do that with your, or you can't do that with your family or, you know, you can't see this loved one or, you know, it's, it was hard not to, not saying it was apples to apples comparison, but it's right. hard not to make some comparisons about some of those. And it's just, it can be a very scary situation for people. And it's just like, how do you deal with that? And in this movie too, very scary situation. And you get to see people handling it in different ways, you know, everything from, um, you know, a mother yelling, not yelling, but like telling her kids to get away from this daughter while they were sitting in a doctor's appointment. She can yeah. tell she's infected. Yeah. She she's not to the point where she's danger. 
but like kids get away, come here, come here. And I, I saw stuff like that, you know, like somebody was coughing, like, get over here, get over here. Not saying right or wrong. So I'm not make, passing judgment, but you see some things like that. But then you also have, she has her good friends that are like, come out and you're like, you're not staying inside or you're going to come out and hang out with us, you know, and she's got her best friend willing to hug her, be with her. You know, she's not scared of her. She knows, you know, so you just saw some of those comparisons of anyway, I, I, I saw some, it was hard not to think about it. I'm not yeah, expressing yeah, it really sure. well. <laughs> sure. It was definitely. Uh, you, you had to, you had to think about it. Yep. Um, uh, let me see if anybody's talking about it uh, in the chat. Uh, Cody is telling Adam to check out uh, the man from nowhere. And I would second that. And he says, Maggie, I've had it in the collection a while and never popped it in. So hopefully this will uh, give you some impetus to do that. And yeah, I, I was all excited because I, like I said, we were talking about this. I knew I was going to watch it anyway for our, our swap. But then when we were on our, our little trip, I found it used in McKay's. So there you go. And Holland says, pop it in, Cody. Yep. And all right, says, yes, sir. Maybe very soon. Let's, let's see what they say. Yeah. We're, <laughs> hopefully we're saying some good things about it. And Holland says, you forgot Arnold's name. It's Wade. I looked it up while, while Corey was talking. His character's name is Wade. So, but, I was, but I was thinking, what's the daughter's name again? Oh, right. It's in the title. <laughs> yeah, that's Maggie. I would, I would, yeah, I, that's not, that sounds like something I would do. Except, <laughs> except, not to sidetrack us here, but she looked so familiar to me. And Abigail Breslin has been I, in a, a, quite a few things. Yeah, so I looked it up. And I was like, oh, Little Miss Sunshine and Signs. And there yeah. was a couple of them that I'm like, okay. But she was quite a bit younger in some of those films. Where Yes. And if anybody in the chat or, or you yourself, I don't know if you have or haven't, if, you, if you've not seen Little Miss Sunshine, please go, please see that movie. I have not seen it yet. I, I have it. I need to watch it. Oh, I, I love Little Miss Sunshine. It's a fantastic movie. It, it's a little, it depends on the age of, uh, I know your kids are older, but I'm talking to other people. Depending on the age of your kids, it's a family movie, but it's a family movie that has some harsh language, harsh mm. language mm -hmm. and uh, uh, some scenes that might uh, be a little tough to explain to younger ones, so you kind of judge accordingly. See, my, but, my kids are old enough now. They're explaining things to me. Right, right. Like, <laughs> so we're in the same boat. Um, but, you know, for other people out there who might have kids, if, if your kids are around 11 or 12, right. you know, maybe, maybe, depending on the maturity of your child. Uh, if they're younger than that, probably not. Uh, but, again, depending on the maturity of your child and how yeah. lenient you are with what they watch. Um, I feel like my mom is like, hey, go ahead and watch it. What do I care? <laughs> <laughs> and that was just because it was the 80s not because my mom was negligent or anything that's what we did in the 80s so Everybody watched everything i know again i go i go on sidetracks and i promise i won't go too far but i was the same way so like my parents and especially my mom it was funny what things they were okay with in the early 80s and what things they weren't so like it seems like and don't think she's like bad she's awesome mom very very loving but so like violence and like language she's you're like ah, oh, you're you're fine but it would came when it would come to the naughty stuff is when she'd be like, no, 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 no. <laughs> you know, yeah. like I, I think that's just kind of an American thing. Yeah. Cause I mean, I, I, I forget who the, who, I was watching Pat, if you Pat if from half cheater will uh, oh, yeah. still yeah. here. And he was talking to somebody about a similar thing. And I, I can't remember if he said it or his guest said it, um, but it was a quote attributed to somebody. And it basically, it was like, if, if you show a, if you show a boob and you show somebody sucking on it, you know, that's an X rating that might get you an X rating. But if you take the same boob and you chop it off, it's just rated R. It's okay. It's, it's nothing perfectly fine. And I, I think that's just an American thing. That's just our sensibilities as weird as they may be. Yep. No, we're I okay can't violence. argue with that. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're okay with the violence, sexy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it was growing up for me. I, I remember yeah, that yeah, vividly. For, for, for a lot of people. My my mom was like, she was really lenient. It was like, you know, well, you're going to see a boob at some point. You might as well watch it. <laughs> well, it, and I think my parents did that at a certain point too, where they're just like, you know, just because you see them do stuff on TV or on a movie doesn't mean you're able to do it, right? You know, right. like that separation of watching something and knowing it's not a reality that you're going to live out. Kind of right, right, right. 
uh, Cody, you laugh LMAO. I do that all the time, Holland. Or what's this movie about? And it's in the title. Yeah, we, we all have those moments. We yep. all have those moments. Uh, Tracy, love this because you are able to shine light on lesser known films. Uh, yeah, we try. We try. So every now and again, we get the really well known films, but most people have seen those. Uh, but uh, movies like this and The Man from Nowhere, I, I think, deserve some light. So I'm happy to give it to to them. Well, and also, I think both of us had heard of each of these movies yes. separately, except for me. I never got around to watching Maggie and you just hadn't gotten around to watching man from nowhere. So I love these things too, where it gets you, gives you that motivation, a little kick to like, you know, you want to watch it. It's just, you yeah. know, grab it and put it in and watch it instead of sitting there trying to figure out what you're going to pick out. It's, it's kind of fun to be able to do that. Oh yeah. Collectors, you know, nightmare. You just sit in front of the shelf for 20, 30 minutes trying to figure out it's, what you want to watch. It's like collector's paralysis. It's no, it's like insane. you sit, like I'll sit there and I'm like, I have so many, great movies i haven't watched that i want to watch but it's just like a deer in headlights you know you yeah, just lock yeah. up a little bit when you got to pick it out so sometimes what i'll do is i'll go on go online go to one of those sites that has a randomizer and let it just pick a number and i'll go okay and since i have my my entire collection is on a spreadsheet and, you know, or and in letterbox actually i can go okay what number was that one and then i'll pick it out and oh let's, well i guess we're watching this tonight so that helps sometimes but you know you don't always want to do that because it might fall in a movie you just not in the mood for right and i always wanted to try sometime too so like um i don't know if you ever like watch um brian goes blue and yeah. coco yeah um and then um derek uh pure hangout mm -hmm. and i know a lot of other people do this but so like Brian and Coco, I know they did like a, a Halloween kind of advent calendar kind of a thing. And then um, I know Derek did something similar too, where they just yeah. wrote a bunch of movies that they know they want to watch and rant, just mix them all up and put them on dates and you just pick it. And what you pick, that's what you're going to watch. And it's like, yeah. don't waste any time. Just pick it out and just grab the movie and start watching yeah, it. And it sounds like a yeah. great idea. has seen maggie she's maggie so much fun i think so fun what movie did you watch tiana so okay so i, I don't know holly may have different thoughts on that uh oh oh my man is here Coach Trini, my guy what's up hey Trini. and he's just saying hey I, to some folks i've had some people say that to me before though too like i i throw that out way too often we're like oh yeah it was a fun movie i had fun with it and they're like it was about zombies taking over the world I'm like well okay it wasn't fun but you know what i mean like i enjoyed <laughs> it but i've i've had that so many times they're like what do you mean you had fun with it <laughs> right like, right well, right you know, some, some movie that's like a lot of people might see as depressing and you're like oh it was fun like, yeah i had fun with it <laughs> <laughs> they're like what uh matt uh mika really enjoyed maggie cool yeah very cool. cool and tim just saying saying hi all I'm right so in the middle of Maggie, let's go ahead and get back to that one. Yeah. So in the middle of Maggie, well, early on, actually, and then the, the scene I'm going to really talk about is a little more in the middle. But early on, after Maggie has been home, uh, she's kind of wandering around the woods around their, around their home. Mm -hmm. And uh, we see two zombies come upon her. Mm -hmm. And they're about to attack her. One is an adult and one is a child. We find out later is like four years old mm -hmm. and uh, she hasn't fully turned so this is very early stages for her so she's scared doesn't want to be bitten again and dad pops up uh and he takes care of the two zombies he he gets rid of them and we find out that uh these two they lived in a house not far away uh, i think the woman's name was bonnie i think um she was the mom in that house and the, the zombies were her husband and her her daughter mm -hmm. and when they got infected she would not turn them in for quarantine she just kept them in the house tried to keep them hidden away from everybody right and then this happened so i i think that was a great way of putting it to the audience you know what would you do if it were you and it reached that point and and kind of planting a seed for us you know like okay what do you think uh wade or arnold schwarzenegger what do you think he should do because you know this is coming right that that's kind of what the movie is telling you you know this is coming right and i thought when bonnie showed up and talked to him she just popped up on his front porch uh 
really distraught and really talking to him. I thought that was a pretty powerful scene. Oh yeah. Um, I, I don't know if you felt the same way. Yes. Um, do, wh what were your thoughts on that whole situation? Um, it, the whole thing hit pretty hard for me. So like right off the bat, like you said, so even get before the, that wife shows up, uh, when he comes up fi to find his daughter and there's the two zombies, you know, the, the, the dad and this younger girl come at them, he knew who they were. They're neighbors that grew up, you know, around right next door to them. And he, you could tell he recognized who they were. He was trying to talk to them and he was like mm -hmm. saying the guy's name and it was like, tell me you can understand what I'm saying. Like, tell me you can hear me. He just wanted like a sense of like some intelligence that he was still there. Yeah. And um, I mean, man, that hit really hard. First off the bat, I mean, if it's close neighbors that you have grown up next to and they've had a child and you've been probably part of their life and that, that situation, I mean, to be put in that sit to put, be put in that situation of like protecting yourself and your family. And I mean, man, not that the, the guy would be a hard thing, but a four or five year old little girl, you know, um, uh, you know, that'd be a very, very tough situation, but you know, it was just dragging on him because that was just foreshadowing. I mean, he could just see like, I'm going to have to make this choice mm -hmm. at some point this, this wife that showed up on the doorstep of that, you know, the, the husband and the little kid, um, she made that choice. They kind of hid their sickness and thought they could just hide them away and, um, not send them to the quarantine. Cause they know what happens there. Yeah. They don't know exactly what happens, but the ultimate is they're going to be, they're going to die. Yeah. And to have that choice, I mean, you're making a choice of like sending a husband, a wife, a child, a, a partner, you know, whatever to that. And you know what the outcome is going to be and that it's not going to be a, it's not going to be a good situation. It's not going to, you know, that that's a very, very tough thing to put on somebody and it just weighs on them. And I think, I think Arnold Schwarzenegger kind of played that in the movie. Well, like you could tell, like he, he looked old, he looked tired. He looked worn down. I mean, just yeah. the, the whole situation everything going on in the world was wearing you down, but now you're, you're dealing with your daughter of your wife as you've already, she's already passed away. And you know, it's your, not only your daughter, but probably your last thing that's really reminding you of your wife that you, you know, had before she passed. And um, yeah, I, th I think he did a good job just showing he just worn down and just beat down and like, it was really struggling with that decision of what, what is he going to do? And I think the, the stepmother in that situation, she was kind of that voice of like, you you know, what's going to have, you're going to have to make this, you're going to have to make the call at one, some time. You can't just keep on putting it off. And he just wanted right. to like, it, it's easy to be like tomorrow, you know, tomorrow I'll deal with it. You know, tomorrow, you know, kind of just right. keep on pushing it off. But anyway, sorry, kind of went off on that. But. No, no, you're good. Um, So do you think it was a case of, putting it off or nobody's going to deal with this, but me. I could see that. I could see not him not wanting to do that at the time, but if something were going to happen, um, he'd rather maybe be at home and him and not in, in confined area with strangers. Mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. I can see that. Yeah, I could definitely see that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which, um, so that brings me to another side character. We get we got the doctor, and um, I, I'm not going to go into everything that the doctor does, but I, I do want to ask this question. Is, is the doctor being a friend or an enabler? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> First, knee-jerk reaction is friend, but when you say... I didn't think of it that way, but when you say that, um, yeah. And like, um, you know, if he's supposed to be thinking of the well being of the people, the, the community that he's allowing him to have some more freedoms and to let things run longer than they normally would, mm -hmm. 
of situations. Um, oh, that's a tough one. Um, he definitely gave him every opportunity to make it last longer at home. <laughs> I mean, he, mm. he, he lied on, lied on reports about how things were progressing. You know, he gave him advice on how to deal with certain things. Um, so I think he thought he was being a good friend to him, but he, I could see where it was enabling him to be able to go down a path that could have turned out a lot worse than, or it could have gone a lot of different directions, you know, um, right. with it, but. Right. It, it, hmm. it, it could have went a lot of different. And I, I'm like you and I just kind of put it out there because when I was watch, rewatching it again, it's like I had those thoughts. It's like, mm. Mm, is he is he a good is he really a good guy? Or is he just kind of helping out in a bad helping a bad situation get worse? Which right which is it? And I, and I, I never came to a clear conclusion on that. So I just wanted to put it out there and see what you thought on that. I didn't I had not thought of it that way, but I Oh, I can definitely see that. I'd like to, now I need to rewatch it with that in my mind a little bit. And, mm -hmm. but that's the thing when you go back and rewatch something after you have had some time to think about it and now thinking of it that way, I, I, I want to go back and rewatch the movie and, and watch him again and kind of see what I think. But oh, I, I absolutely can see what you're saying with okay. that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I, we did have somebody else that popped into the chat. Uh, my man, Big Chris, otherwise known as Floyd, how's Flix? He says, good evening, Dell and Wilkie. Shout out to the chat. Hey, What's going evening. on, man? Glad you popped in. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, let's see what we got here. More people saying, saying hi. And he's saying hi to some folks back. And everybody's saying hi. So, all right. So, yeah, everybody's. Everybody's saying hi to each other, as KB <laughs> would like to say. Uh, I would. Uh, I need a shirt saying that. Everybody's saying hi. Everybody's saying hi. Everybody in the chat saying hi. Um, and there's another one. <laughs> Speaking of KB, really quick, guys. Yeah. Uh, today was his two-year anniversary of, of his channel, so he's got a great video up of that. Um, that was fun to watch. That was yeah, fun to it was watch. very fun. Very fun video to watch. Uh, he's got a great channel. A lot of us are familiar with the conversation. Uh, and we all love the conversation. He's the best at it. So go uh, go check out that video. And of course, as I always say, subscribe to each other out here in the chat because lots of great content creators out here. And and uh, and yeah, he just said everybody said hi. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and again, uh, I, I'm going to keep on. This will be my shirt saying is I don't mean to sidetrack this more, but just going on, <laughs> just going on to that though. Um, not only, and I know you would agree with me as well, but not only. KB, he doesn't always just only put out good content. He is such a, a supportive person that I've yes. ran into in this community that um, he was one that, like I said earlier, um, brought me onto the conversation when he did not have anything to benefit from having me on his channel. You know, like I'm not bringing in subscribers. I'm not bringing in views. He did it because he wanted, he's like, Hey, I've, I've ran into you in the chats. I'd like to talk to you a little bit more on this. And, um, so right off the bat, that was cool. He also gave me, he's like, I'm not, not going to push you into what you don't want to do, but you're saying you want to do this YouTube thing. Like what's stopping you from doing it? Like, I'm going to, I'm going to do this accountability, you know, nudge for you, not a bad way, but just like, if you truly want to do this, like what's going to get you to take that next step. And he, like I said, I started doing it pretty quickly after that. And he's one that's always open to, um, man, just like answering questions, like yeah. trying to figure out stuff. I mean, he's just been a, a cool guy all around. Yeah. I, I've had a lot of, a lot of exchanges with him behind the scenes and in, 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 uh, on Instagram, we've had a lot of DMS going back and forth, just either questions or just conversations between the two of us on, on a lot. And, uh, he's been one of the biggest supporters for this channel. So I appreciate him for that. Absolutely. Um, I would say I was one of the biggest of his channel, but he's got a lot of great, great, great supporters. So <laughs> yeah. I, I can't, I can't make that claim <laughs> yeah. and, and I wouldn't dare. All right. Um, so for, for Maggie, we talked about, Arnold, yeah. we talked about him doing a great job. Um, 
to me, this might be his best performance as an as a just an actor. Now, I'm not saying it's his best movie, obviously. I mean, when we got the Terminator movies out there, one and two, and then Total Recall, and you got all these classics that he made in the 80s and in the 90s. But I don't think you can put that Arnold Schwarzenegger into this movie. No. You no. have to have this Arnold. And I, I thought just on, from a pure acting standpoint, this might be his best work. How, do you rate it anywhere near that, or is it lower for you? Than uh, rating it uh, compared to? Well, let's, uh, just in comparison to his body of work, just as an actor, again, not as, not as a movie as a whole, but just his performance, uh, how do you rate it among his body of work? Well, okay, so I know it didn't do real well, I don't think, like critically like uh review wise but, right 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 um i don't base my thoughts off of that i enjoyed it and i would almost go a little higher because it's i like seeing somebody stretch outside of their um their comfort zone mm -hmm. i i think this is from what anything else he's ever really done this is outside of that like i haven't seen a lot of dramatic um is that what you would say like a dramatic role from him or like a this yeah this is pretty much a drama pretty, yeah. pretty it just have, have zombies in it right i mean it, it very well could have been and i know somebody made a <laughs> kind of a little quib to me like oh you watch that that's not really a zombie movie it's a melodrama about a hus or a dad and a daughter you know and i'm like okay fair. there's a lot of that in there fair yeah, enough that's, that's fair yeah. that doesn't mean it's a bad movie though <laughs> right exactly it just has an interesting twist so um I really liked seeing him do something that he, I don't normally think of him doing. And maybe he really enjoyed that too. It was like that, let him try something different. And then two, not only him, but see something different with a zombie movie. Like I felt mm -hmm. that was a different twist to it. Cause it wasn't just all out hordes of zombies sprinting around and like machine guns going off everywhere and explosions. I mean, right. it was quarantines and like, it was kind of, in the kind of under control phase of mm. the situation and trying to figure out the best way to deal with it. Um, so I, I, I thought it was a refreshing twist on not only him as a actor, but then as the zombie zombie genre. So I, I, I want, I don't want, I guess maybe I already tipped my hat, but, <laughs> right, but right, uh, right. and yeah. And, and like I said, I'm, I'm with you. I, I really like seeing him, you know, uh, stretch to speak uh he, he showed us that he can act in a drama and, you know over the years he's been developing as an actor over throughout his career you know you know the, his performance in the terminator either from terminator to terminator 2 is a big difference oh yeah right um as far as his ability to act and then going forward and he got really comfortable with comedy mm -hmm. uh especially if it's injected into an action movie Mm -hmm. And I thought this was really the first time that he went into a, a went into a drama, and he was uh, he was convincing, and you you kind of like you said, you felt the weight of the world on his shoulders. You felt him how tired he was, how beaten down he was, and oh yeah, how much weight was just on his every decision now that his daughter was in this situation. And uh, I, I thought he was really good, so I was uh, very very pleased uh, with his work in this film um now this film compared to the first movie we talked about uh it is shorter it's actually only about 90 95 minutes yeah it was a quick watch but it is a slow burn so just like i asked about pacing in that movie how, how do you feel about the pacing this time i was good with it um i don't mind a slow burn movie uh if it kind of has a, has a payoff with it and I don't know, a slow burn hour and 30 minute movie is way different than a slow burn, you know, two and a half, three hour movie, <laughs> you yes. know, you know yes, what I mean? Sure. So, I mean, that's where you're like, okay, hour 20, hour 30 minutes, like how slow of a burn is it, you know? And, um, <laughs> but, but this is another one. Um, I think that's my true test. Maybe I didn't hit pause at all. Like, have you ever done that in a movie where you're just yeah. like, man, Everybody, this has been we, going for forever. Everybody's done that. It's know? like you pause it and just like, how much time is left of this movie? And mm -hmm. even if you're enjoying it, you're just like, it just felt like it's been going on forever. This is one I didn't do it with either. It, neither one of these. So, um, yes, I agree with you. Uh, somebody might go into it and be disappointed because they hear Schwarzenegger and zombies. And like mm -hmm. we were talking about earlier, 
it's not commando you know he's doesn't have a machine gun and grenades and like run around blasting everything and so it's you could go into it with a different expectation and be let down but if you kind of know what you're getting into um they're building up the characters and they're building up the tension through the movie of what what decision he might have to end up making by yeah. the end of it and i i thought it drew it out really well like it just like a decision like that you wouldn't make it like just like that you know it's not a quick decision so just like the movie it kind of i mean it shows that relationship and the things changing and um him dealing with if this then that kind of a thing you know like what do i what can i do and this is my my little girl you know i was like right and me as a dad i mean i think people could sympathize with it whether they have kids or not but i just am thinking i'm looking at that the the lady playing the daughter um that probably the same age or playing the same age as my daughter right now mm -hmm. it, it's uh, it tugs at you a little bit i know it's like oh far-fetched with zombies or whatever but you start putting yourself in those shoes and i'm like man to even make last thing you ever want to see is your your kids go through something hard or have to suffer and you know to have some of the choices that he thinks is or not what he thinks the the choices people are putting on his plate <laughs> yeah are <clears throat> mind-boggling oh yeah oh yeah and yeah it, it's definitely definitely tough uh to deal with a uh, caveman said it, he i you are a legend to me at least thank you caveman i appreciate that you're awesome though so at least i'm a, I'm a legend to one person hey that's all you, <laughs> hey one more yeah. than i got so there you go <laughs> there you go uh holland says miles better than arnold in escape plan oh yeah yeah well i've never I seen mean, escape plan actually it, it's it is a fun movie but i don't think it's a good movie yeah and and for arnold I, i'll say this he's actually one of the better parts of the movie um okay he he's doing uh he, he's kind of doing uh, i don't know you know how you see in cartoons sometimes a character's trying to make a decision and you got a um got a, an angel on one side oh, and yeah, on yeah. the other yeah so i mean technically he's not that he's just a person in the movie but you kind of get that that he is kind of that for uh sylvester stallone's character okay so <laughs> and he's kind of trying to you know convince him to do things and pull the strings and he's he's one of the better parts of the movie uh for me uh okay man maggie is on pluto okay okay i did not know know that maggie was on pluto but then again I, I wouldn't look for it so since it's since i have it sitting here so that's right that's right yeah if anybody else wants to watch it though yeah please let's uh k-man lets us know that it is on pluto so cool yep all right um i don't, I don't want to go into what actually happens at the end other than to say uh did you see that coming no no <laughs> not exactly not how it played out i say no um, okay. I I don't know. I, I, like you said, I don't want to go too much in, but um, no, it happened. Things wrapped up differently than I was expecting. I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's it's the movie sets itself up, so I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm spoiling anything here when I say that because right from the outset, you already know that the movie's a tragedy. It's just mm -hmm. how is this tragedy going to play out? Right. And and that's not the way that most people would figure it going in yeah and i agree with you it that's not a spoiler like it it plays up that she's infected there's not a cure and it's kind of like how long does she have and like how are things going to play out like how bad are things going to get what direction is it going to go and that's what you kind of have to find out you know but no it it ended differently than i was imagining yes for for, for me too and I had, I had kind of forgotten that that's, that's the way it ended because I hadn't seen it in about four or five years. Okay. Um, and, and then as we got close to it, I was like, oh, yeah, okay, that's what's happening. Started coming back. <laughs> yeah, it started coming back to me. So that that was uh, that was interesting now. So they kind of fooled me twice. Uh, Caveman just brought up Escape Plan. He said, Escape Plan 4 <laughs> is rumored to be Sly escaping from his statues. Did you see the the slide documentary, the Sylvester Stallone documentary? I have not, but I've heard comments, so I I think I know what you're referencing. But <laughs> yeah, it, 
it's it takes place most of it in his home. Yeah. And he's kind of getting things packed up to move. Um, well, people are packing things up. For yeah, so right. Yeah. Really. <laughs> but when you know, as they go around the house and or he goes around the house, he's got statues of himself everywhere. Statues and statuettes and pictures and it's ridiculous. It's 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 borderline creepy. I was going to say, how creepy is that? I, that's the word that came to my mind. I was like, how creepy is that? Like, Why do you need so many things of yourself? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, the ego is just out of control with that boy. <laughs> yep. No, I, I've heard plenty of people say stuff about that, but no, I had not watched it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Any other parts of Maggie that you wanted to touch on before we wrap this thing up? Um. I, 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 like I said, I, it's one of those that um, I liked seeing different ways that people were handling the situation and um, responded to this daughter having the virus, the, the infection, whatever you want to call it. Um, and so we talked about some points where some of the choices or attitudes or actions of the stepmother, how that kind of hit hard or you know, the mother coming from next door that Arnold had to, you know, take care of, um, her husband and daughter. Um, it also hit me just as hard. Um, some of her friends that were showing her love and care in that situation too, or like, I still want to see you. You're still my friend. You're still who I grew up and loved. And so that was a big thing too. I thought where these kids are scared, but they were still reaching out and helping you know, their friends, uh, in that situation and still spending time with them and still treating them as a, a human being. Yeah. That, that was a, that was a really good scene and it was, um, it was a nice break from the tension. Yeah. Yeah. That That's, that's it for me. It was a nice break from the tension and let us take a breath while she takes a breath. And, and during that part of the movie, actually Arnold's character kind of disappears for a little bit. Yep. And, and, you know, it was like the movie was light ish for, for a few minutes anyway. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of got back to what it was after that. So I, I appreciated uh, that as well. Um, and, and, but then it kind of, you know, it hit hard again when the oh, yeah. kind of saying goodbye at the, at the, on the next day, I think it was the next couple of days. Yep. Or the next day when she brought her home, rather after the after the little party, but yep, that was that was that was, that hit her a little bit hard there. All right, so let's go ahead and wrap it up. And in this yeah. case, you're, everybody knows I really really enjoy Maggie. So your overall thoughts, how I disliked or anything else you want to say uh, about Maggie? I really enjoyed the movie. Um, I'm glad that this was in the the talks for our for our swap for tonight. This is one I'd heard about for a long time. I just had not gotten around to watching it. So it's great when you have these to give yourself the excuse to watch it. Um, I'm not going to go out and say like, Oh, greatest movie ever, but I enjoyed it. Um, if you go into it, the right expectation, I can, I know some people were disappointed because they were thinking Arnold Schwarzenegger zombies, they were going to have a lot more action and it's not, it's a lot more character driven and um, drama and the relationships and how they're dealing with this horrible situation and what's going on and what are going to be the next steps of it. And so I enjoyed watching it. I'm glad I have it in the collection now and uh, I could see going back and watching it again, especially after a few things that you talked about with the friend, the, the doctor and how he handled some of the situations. And um, uh, yeah, it's fun to go back and watch it with a different mindset and kind of maybe focus on a couple different things a little bit closer and um, see what I think about it coming out of it. But uh, very, very glad I got to see it. Um, and I would recommend it to people to watch, just know what you're going into. It's not an action movie, but it's a, it's a good twist on Arnold Schwarzenegger as a character or as a, 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 an actor and a twist on the zombie genre genre and taking it a little differently. And like you said, I think somebody who saw it before 2020 might go back and watch it now and have a different take on it. And, uh, um, definitely thought, thought provoking. We'll just say that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would, I would agree with, with that, with the thought provoking. All right. Uh, let's make, take one last look at the chat. See, see if anybody else is saying anything. 
uh, uh, we already got the escape plan. A very, <laughs> very good. That was the that was the joke of the day for those who follow K Man on Instagram. You familiar with the goats with the joke of the day? So he was busting at the seams with bust of himself scale yeah. one to one bust. Yeah, some of those were like three to one because they were like way bigger than he is. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's going to be funny. Too. You're making statues of yourself that are taller and more muscular than what yeah, you really are. You know, he's got like the replica of the, the Rocky statue that's in, that's actually in Philadelphia. He's got like that and it's bigger than he is. And he's <laughs> got him of himself as different characters. And it's, it's like, dude, that's, the, that you, is creepy. You, you know what you look like, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. You have a mirror. You have a mirror, right? Yeah. You have a mirror. You don't, you don't need to be reminded. He just wants to remind you know, everybody else too, that walks through the house. So, <laughs> Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, only way I could have more action is if they would have had zombie with walkers. <laughs> he's talking about he's talking about Maggie here. Uh, yeah, it, it's but like you said, it's not it, it's not an action movie. No, and I, I think part that's part of the reason why it didn't uh, do as well as it could have is because yeah, like we've been saying this whole time, you know, we got Arnold, we got Zabi, you know, he's got to be mowing them down by the, by the hundreds. Right. Yeah. And, and that's, that's not what happens here. I think you just have expectations. When I hear those two things, this is different than what I thought, you know, when I first heard, you know, Schwarzenegger zombies, and that's probably maybe that was a, see, I don't even remember this one coming out. So I don't know how the marketing was with this, how much they did. And when they did it, if they leaned into like letting people know it's not going to go down that route or not. Um, do you yeah, remember? I, I don't, I don't remember because honestly, when I saw it, I just happened to, um, I actually first saw it, not on this, this, I actually saw it in the, uh, I was just kind of getting movies from my local library and it was like, wait, there's an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. I, I don't know nothing about. And I just grabbed it and checked it out. So I enjoyed it. Uh, after that, all right, Mr. Corey, I'm going to put you back on the spot. And yes, thanks for the joke of the day plug. You are absolutely welcome. <laughs> um, so I'm going to put you back on the spot. And this time you're just going to tell us all about your amazing channel, what you do there, where to find you and all those good things. Go for it, my man. Oh, thank you very much. And I guess right off the bat, uh, Del, thank you very much for having me on this. This was a blast. I had fun hanging out with you. Always do. So it was great meeting you in person too. So um, I would say... My channel, um, I'm Wilkie's Movies and Music uh, on YouTube and also on Instagram. Uh, I've been doing a lot more uh, live streams where I'm doing, we were talking about earlier, the movie club, where I'm having people on from the community, people I've met on YouTube or Instagram, uh, to have them on, uh, to have a chat and get to know them a little bit better, but then also picking out a movie ahead of time to watch and kind of talk about and review together. Um, a lot of times we make, try to have it on a free streaming service. So if somebody wants to uh, be able to watch it ahead of time as well and join in the conversation, there's not a, a dollar barrier uh, stopping you from doing that. But uh, yeah, that's where you can find me and doing that. And hopefully I'll keep on plugging away at it. So far I'm having a great time. Um, I've enjoyed all the people I'm running into like you, Dell, and a lot of the people in the chat here. Um, it's been awesome. So I guess no matter where it ends up going for me, uh, not being corny, but it's been a win so far. I've met so many great people that, uh, um, I don't know, I'm having a blast and I'm going to ride it out a little bit longer, I think. So <laughs> as long as people cool. put oh, up with me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you are. So yeah, guys, if you're not sub to, to Corey already, go ahead and do that. All right. Definitely go check out his channel. Watch the movie club streams that he has. Uh, he has a great time. He has a movie that they talk about. Uh, eventually they get around to it, but they have lots of great, great conversation leading up to it. So, you know, don't, don't miss that. Um, I, I do want to acknowledge Laren popped in. He says, Ellen Corey, good evening. Hey, Larry. And then he says, I missed it. LOL. I just catch the replay. Laren, you know how it goes. It's, it's all good. Um, as for, uh, as for this channel, what I have coming up is I do have another movie swap next week. A week from today, I have Zach Attack Reviews coming on. Uh, Zach from Zach Attack Reviews. So I'm, I'm excited about that. It'll be my first time getting to chat with him. I, I recently discovered his channel a few months back and have really enjoyed his work. Uh, so I'm getting to talk to him. And someone whose channel I discovered quite a while ago is coming on after that on Tax Day, April 15th. 
uh, my man oh. Alan from Pops Movie Dungeon is going to be on, and, and we're going to have a good time talking with him also. Awesome. So, yeah, come on back for both of those. In between there, I'll release a couple of videos here and there. I'll finish up what I've been watching, what I did watch, rather, for uh, Martial Arts uh, Madness. I'll finish that up uh, for sure. And all the other movies I watched for March, I'll finish that up and... Who knows what else I'm going to put out there. But yeah, just be on the lookout for that. I'm going to thank my guest, Corey, again. And yes, it was great thank meeting you. you in person. Great chatting with you there, Orbit DVD. Great chatting with you again tonight. Great yeah. chatting with you when I was on the movie club. And we'll have to do all those things again. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm up for Absolutely. it. Oh, yeah. All right. So that's it for us, guys. Everybody take it easy. Have a great night. Bye-bye.